In the aftermath of a pre-dawn sweep affected in two Belize city neighborhoods on Wednesday morning, residents are enraged that elements within the Belize Police Department would descend on their homes without knocking or asking. In actual fact, those unnamed officers stand accused of breaking and entering into a number of houses on Mayflower and Banak streets, including one property where two elderly women reside. I was sleeping. I heard a big bang. I get up and I look through my bedroom window. By the time I could look through the window, the cops, they are already up and run up, bust my padlock out from my gate, bust my scream door to my veranda open, and two gun in my face. To make matters worse, the operation was carried out by members of law enforcement who concealed their identities by wearing balaclavas. In this household, one of the occupants is an 85-year-old woman with a hearing disability. She was fast asleep when a masked officer breached her bedroom door. I did Stuck out the far along to try to get out to open the door. By the time I come in, then down the inside of my hall, boss my next door. And they ask who in the room, like I tell them my auntie, she's 85, a deaf. She can't hear, and I have to wait until 8 o'clock in the morning when she get up and open her door. Well, if I not open it, I want to stamp it open, and I stamp open the door, my auntie traumatized, it frightened it, get up. Want to know who that, who that, what happened, you know? And I think it's totally wrong. A few nights ago, a similar incident had taken place on Banak Street, where cops stormed the residence and rounded up several persons. Among them was Angel Garcia, a young man with no criminal record. He says that he had not long arrived from work and was seated in the living room when the officers descended in one fell swoop. He is covered in a bedsheet after being viciously beaten and hauled off to the Raccoon Street police station on Sunday night. Sunday night, they come and when they come, they just bomb rush in my house, they stamp open my door, block up my door there. And when they come, they come and they meet me right there, so they sit down with my family, with my lady and my picnic and thing. I had to play while he game, I just come home from work, because we made to finish up Ebenezer school, you know. I just come from work, not even my beard. Oh, everybody put up on a hand, better we put up a hand on a let's go. They start to jerk me out, so I tell the man, please at least we can get a shirt, because the station under the care, you know. A man carry me out there, on a put up on a hand against the wall, when we put up for hand against the wall. By the time I look, so I say like, nah, what my Libra, I'll let you check. Next thing I know, they just start to whop up me. Garcia alleges that he was struck in the back of the head with the butt of an officer's service weapon. On the second blow, he says that he was knocked unconscious. I asked the man, why you know the deal with me like this for? You know, you meet me in my house, you know? I know they do nothing. When you come meet me in my house with my family, the next thing I know, they just start to whop up me all in my back, back of my leg. Then the next thing I know, I de turn so to one of the officers, I just can't blank out. Up to now, I still don't know, I still don't remember exactly if that gun butt, he gun butt me in my head, or what me in my head, but I know one of them gun butt me from back on. From a broader perspective, the oppressive approach employed appears to be indiscriminate in its application, particularly since the police department has working knowledge of who the gang members are that it should be targeting. I live here by myself, just me and my aunt were 85 years old. Nobody, not even my grandkids didn't live with me, nobody. I have my, grand, my granddaughter, my grandson, there, but nobody live around me. They come, they visit, and then go. Five daughters. My grandson, only 12 years old, he go to school. She, 10. I don't have nobody wrong me. So I don't see why they do that. They know the gangbangers, they know who they are, but they know who they encourage it. So they shouldn't I mean, do what they do to me. It's a sentiment that is echoed by Acting Commissioner of Police Chester Williams, perhaps in a more figurative manner, but he is being taken at his word. The ordinary law abiding citizens in these areas can be assured that whatever rights they have enjoyed yesterday, that today they can continue to enjoy those rights. We know who our players are and those are the persons we are going after. Reporting for News 5, I am Isana Kayetano.